But joining us right now to talk more about the NFL, friend of the show from DraftKings, Reed Fowler is joining us here on 97.3 ESPN. Of course, Reed, really busy time of year for him. He is over at the Northern Trust at the DraftKings house at Liberty National in Jersey City. So Reed is taking a time, a little bit of time away from what he's doing up there. The door to talk about some football, away from his golf, which is one of his passions. Reed, how you doing today, my friend? Good, good, Josh. Yeah, we're up here in Jersey City, um, watching the Northern Trust. Just got a chance to talk to Bryson. He's doing well, shot six under. Uh, a little bit better than his even uh, his even far around yesterday. So he's in good spirits. He's tired, uh, but hey, he's uh, he's right back in it. I think I think he's T nine or he's top ten. I think just around there. So all things are good right now. Well, at least somebody's playing well because in uh, li- listen in, in, in Philadelphia everything is sour right now. So we're we're gonna try to put a l- at least a little bit of a positive spin on things. You know, Reed, I, I've always been told you know you can't read too much into. The preseason. A wise man once told me, watch the players, not the final score. So, uh, you know, what is your position on the Eagles coming into this season? A lot of change, a lot the same as well with that football team. Yeah, I think what you have to take away from preseason is, like you just mentioned, the individual players. uh, How are they playing? Is their stock going up or down? Uh, What do you like about a a certain defensive scheme? What do you like about the new head coach? kind of glean just more of a general 30,000 foot view as opposed to specifics when it comes to the, to, you know, breaking down the game. And I think when you take a look at what, you know, how they played last night and what you see for the Philadelphia Eagles, I think there are some good takeaways, even though it wasn't a great game for the Eagles faithful out there. I think TJ Edwards will play fantastic. He and Alex Singleton both had like 400. And I think Ross Tucker was mentioning it. They must have had, yeah, like close to 50 tackles together combined. Guys are all over the field. And we kind of saw that last year from Singleton, that he stepped up into that middle linebacker role, and he was fantastic. So in his limited time, you saw him really perform. I also think Devonta Smith, right, only two catches, but really crisp route runner. You see how good he is despite his size that he can get open and, and, and those here, right? And now the other part of that, though, John, is who's going to be throwing in the ball, and even though Jalen Hurts wasn't playing due to an illness. I think it's safe to say that and, and in the locker room, your, you know, your insight is probably a little bit better than mine, close to the, uh, to the Eagles' uh, locker room, is that Jalen Hurts is their franchise quarterback. And I don't see how you can roll out Nick Mullins or Joe Flacco week one and not Jalen Hurts. Well, first of all, I don't even know if Nick Mullins even makes the roster at this point. He, he looks like ever since he had that shoulder injury, he just can't throw the football anymore. He looks like he's a little gun-shy, but... You're right, though. Your perception is right. Your Hurts has taken the, the first team snaps all training camp. No one else getting first team snaps. In fact, Flacco mentioned last night that he barely gets any work with the first team. So them not having the starters out there uh, yesterday actually helped him a little bit. So uh, t- to me, you know, we all know that Hurts is going to be the guy. The question, though, is, is he going to be good enough? Because people are looking at him as a trial period this year. You know, Jalen Hurts doesn't play well enough this year, Reed. The expectation is the Eagles are going to take all those draft assets and try to trade up to get a quarterback. So, in your mind, can Jalen Hurts be good enough to be a franchise quarterback? Yeah, I think with what you see and what Philly needs to do, is you guys need to be competitive, right? The division itself is one that is right for the taking now. It's, you, know, you, could, you could easily say that this is a rebuild year. But what we saw from Jalen Hurts is he put seats in the stands, right? Either virtual, like if you're watching uh, on TV, or the literal seats in the stands, uh, uh, the backside in the stands. So even that, even from a business standpoint, if he's not playing well, he's going to be better than, than Joe Flacco. I think it's safe to say that he gives you the best opportunity to win. Now, like even early off in the, in the preseason, and, and even after last season, really early on, there was a sentiment that Jalen Hurts was not the guy, not with Sirianni in, it's the new camp, right? It's not their quarterback. So would I be surprised if the new the new regime wanted their own quarterback? Because we know head coaches in the NFL are tied to their quarterbacks, especially if you draft a quarterback. Yeah, that might be something that, that we see down the road. But from everything that I'm seeing and that I'm reading, that when Jalen Hurts, you know, when they talk about Jalen Hurts, teammates talk about him, he's that guy. His work ethic, 
first in, last out. He's, you know, he's testing the receivers in the locker room, uh, you know, going to and from practice. That's what you want from your quarterback, especially a guy like Jalen Hurts, who has talent and sometimes, you know, potentially has too much talent where he thinks he can build himself. I think he's the best option you have right now, but I wouldn't be surprised if the new regime wants to go a different route next year. Reed Fowler joining us here on the Sports Bash on 97.3 ESPN, at Reed T. Fowler on Twitter, DraftKings, NFL, and PGA analyst joining us here on 97.3 ESPN. Now, Reed, with all that being said, a lot of people believe the NFC East is anyone's game, and if you watch Hard Knocks, the Cowboys are probably the most boring team in the division at this point, the way Hard Knocks is portraying them. And then we know with Washington, they got the defense, but questions are about the quarterback, right? And then the Giants... Nobody knows. Daniel Jones, the offensive line, nobody knows. Of course, the Eagles have their own questions. So how do you gauge the NFC East looking at it right now? Yeah, I think I think for, for myself, the front runner is the Washington football team. You know, right now on the DK Sportsbook, the women's division, they're plus 230. Dallas is the favorite at plus 130, and you have Finley there at plus 550. So you got some pretty long odds on Philly to win the division if it's wide open. Yeah, that's a pretty good, pretty good number to take on a team that does have the ability. They do have the pieces. Like Jalen Rager, we know how athletic he is. Uh, Dallas Goddard, or if it's Zach Ertz. We don't know what Zach Ertz, what, what, what the future holds for him in Philadelphia, but we know what Dallas Goddard can do. And we know what Miles Sanders can do. So you take a look at that, and you take a look at some of these other players on the defensive side that are playing well. Plus 550 is not too bad from a division standpoint. But when you look at Washington now with Ryan Fitzpatrick, with, uh, with Antonio Gibson, Terry McLaurin is there, Curtis Samuel was brought in in the offseason. A long to go with this defense, it kind of harkens a little bit, Josh, and these two, these two teams are not the same. But I do see, I do feel like you see the Rams a little bit, the Los Angeles Rams with an offense that can score with a top-five defense. And that's what we're seeing in Washington right now. That defense is strong, and that offense got better in the offseason. You know, it's funny about uh, the Cowboys also because the last 10 times they've been a favorite to win the division, they've only won the division one of those 10 times. So, you know, yeah, they, they may be a favorite in a lot of places to win the division, but let's be realistic. You know, they don't win it that often. So, you know, it might be smart if you're wanting to throw a wager, you throw the wager on one of the other three teams over on DraftKings. Reed, you got me over there? Oh, sorry. You got me, Josh? Yeah, you got me now? Yeah, yeah, got you. So what was, what what was the last I, thing you heard me is, say? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I was talking, I was talking about Dallas and Dak Prescott. Yeah. And, you know, we saw how different that team was, right, when Dak went down. Now, I would even argue to say that with Dak in the game and when he was playing and when he was healthy, you know, the, the defense was still allowing a ton of points. So you're right. Like, if they, don't, if they get into these shootouts and – Let's say C.D. Lamb, or one of these guys gets nicked up for a game. You could easily see them sit down. You could easily see, you know, a Mike McCarthy team maybe not necessarily get up to snuff when it comes to winning this division like they should. Clearly, the most talented team, right, especially on offense, is Dallas. Can Micah Parsons, from a rookie standpoint, and yes, he's been, and he, you know, he's been looking good in camp. He's been someone that a lot of people are talking about that his camp footage is, is great. But he's still a rookie, right? He's still a rookie. And can this defense now, with Keanu Neal, with some additions in the offseason, support this offense that if the offense doesn't show up or if someone on that team gets hurt, can they rely on their defense? Right now, you're right. right? I think a lot of it is sediment. And we know, Josh, like Dallas is such a public team. It's such a publicly bet team that, you know, some of these lines, some of these numbers are a little inflated. So if that's the case, you know, like I mentioned, Washington football team sitting right there at plus 230. I think that's a really good number when it is to win the division. A couple more here for DraftKings NFL analyst Reed Fowler joining us here on a happy hour Friday on the Sports Bash on 97.3 ESPN. Of course, you give him a follow on Twitter at Reed T. Fowler. Reed, one of my favorite things I'm looking on the DraftKings Sportsbook futures right now, the NFC West is wide open, as we know, and these, these odds are not exactly crazy. 49ers plus 180, Rams plus 190, Seahawks plus 275. And those Arizona Cardinals did a lot of improvements offseason. They're plus 650 to win the division. I mean, heck, if you're somebody, why don't you just throw a little bit on each one of those four teams? 
Yeah, absolutely. If you take a look at their, their win totals, too, Josh, if you look at everyone, like all those teams aside from the Arizona Cardinals are at 10, 10 and a half, right? That's their regular season win line. And you would think, right, like any one of these teams could really do it. Right? Like you don't feel like there is an overarching. And yes, if I had to pick one of these teams, I think the Rams is that for me, like I mentioned earlier. Uh, and I'm talking about the Washington football team, just because of what they did last year, Josh. When they have an offense, top 15 in pass, top 10, I believe, in rush. And yes, Cam Akers went down, but you know they have Henderson that's there. They have some guys that could support, you know, maybe 75 percent, 80 percent of the upside of what Cam Cam Akers would provide. Maybe a little bit less. But this offense was 22nd in points scored per game, right? And a lot of that had to do with Jared Goff and his. I, I, struggles. Let's call it struggles <laughs> last year, right? Now you bring in Stafford and what he can do to an offense, what we've seen in Detroit, uh, and that top five defense, right? Jalen Ramsey, Aaron Donald. The only thing that worries me a little bit about, about the Rams is they don't have any depth. So to your point, Seattle's sitting there at plus 275. It's still strong, bringing most of that team back on the offensive side and their defense getting a little bit better. And the 49ers. Talk about a team that was just completely destroyed by COVID, completely destroyed by injuries last year, and they were still able to win a respectable amount of games. Like, if I could give, if we could give the coaching award to someone, I think I might have mentioned this on your show, Josh, last year. If we could give the coaching award to anybody from a losing team or anybody in general, Shanahan should have gotten that, that award because of what he did with the team that he had. So you're right. Like, you talk about this division, it's embarrassment of riches. If I just saw the Cardinals, it's going to be a little bit of a struggle. That defense is still young. I know J.J. Watt has come on, but you know they have a lot of rookies on that defense, a lot of second-year guys. Um, and then we know that offense is strong. It's just, and they keep up with these other three teams that are in this division. But, yeah, this is probably the hardest one this year. Reed, before I let you go, I know you're up there at the Northern Trust at the DraftKings house at Liberty National in Jersey City. And as I'm looking right now on DraftKings Sportsbook, your favorite as of this moment, as I'm looking at it, is John Rahm. But Tony Finau right now is minus seven this round, and Finau is plus 600 to win. If you're giving people a little bit of advice out there on the DraftKings Sportsbook, which way are you pointing them in the direction of? Yeah, Tony Finau, again, if you're a fan of mine or if you've listened to any, any one of my shows or interviews, you know how much I love Tony Finau. So... Uh, I don't want to give I don't want to give the listeners a biased opinion, but he played great. He played great today. Um, got a chance to, to catch up with him a little bit, and he was you know he looked in good spirits, looked in high spirits, and he's just a relaxed guy, um, especially in this type of setting. You want that, uh, but when John Rahm is up there, Josh, and JT, Justin Thomas, when they're leading or they're close to this top of the leaderboard, so much win equity is soaked up with those two guys. I wouldn't go past someone like he now. I would not go past someone like. Maybe even a guy like Zeki, but even then, right? You start you start talking about a guy like John Rahm who can run away with this thing because he's playing so so well. Round one, he had no bogeys, eight birdies. Right? That's how well he's playing, and of course, that is scorable. It's a little bit a little bit more moisture. It's raining a little bit here, and the sun is hot. So these guys, if they're hitting their if they're bar, ball striking it well, they can score here. We saw that with Bryson. Bryson made a ton of birdies round one, a ton of birdies round two. Just a lot of those bogeys. So. I'd probably say Tony P now at the high, like the longest odds at plus 600, which sounds weird for a golf tournament, but JT and JT and Rom are just too good to, uh, to try that again. Again, follow us where I read T Fowler covers the NFL and the PGA for DraftKings. He's up there at the Northern Trust, which if you actually want to watch it, it's over there on the, uh, the golf channel right now. You guys can check out that Jersey city course, Liberty national. And he'll be up at the DraftKings house this weekend. Reed, appreciate you making some time out of your day. I know you've been crazy busy. Always good to catch up with you, my friend. All right, Josh. Take care.